Welcome back everybody to another build tutorial. Today I'm going to be showcasing this 2x1 farm base called the Homestead. It's going to be a larger bunker base. Uh, I've got a design that also features wide gap peak downs. So uh, stay tuned. Also later in this video I'm going to show how to make your own syringe printer using the industrial update. All right, from the outside, you can see that we've got a vending machine here. Uh, this is part of the syringe printer that I mentioned before, um, and it also can be used to help fast travel your loot uh, to outpost or to another base. And it can also get your resources that you won't be able to find, you know, out here on an iceberg, for example. So this design is a solo duo base. As you can see, we've got one spawn point there. Got another spawn point back here by the vending machine. Some garage doors for extra security to kind of protect these honeycomb. And one thing you'll notice about this base is that all of the honeycomb are utilized for something. All of them have a purpose. Something that I'm pushing for this base design specifically because of its tiny footprint and because of the objective that this base is trying to accomplish. That being a farm base, uh, you're gonna need to use all of the honeycomb you can to get the most out of this design. Now back here in the corner, I've got a little campfire with a water purifier. That's because we're out on an iceberg, so the water out there is salt water, and you're gonna need this water to keep your little farm alive, which we've got over here. You'll notice we've got a berry patch growing on just this little narrow plot, um, and that's so that you can get some tea mixed up uh, using this mixing table so you can go out and get more out of your farming. Uh, this whole base is intended to try to get the most optimal, most time efficient uh, rust experience possible, which is why these honeycomb are being utilized instead of just, you know, left empty. And uh, also why I included this farm and uh, this mixing table. Definitely good to get the most out of your time when you're playing rust uh, as opposed to uh, you know, just slogging through the grind. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on back here in these honeycomb in the back. So you've got a standard uh, small furnace honeycomb back here set to automate and uh, make this, you know, transferring sulfur and uh, charcoal process that much easier. We've also got an electric equivalent here, uh, just to show you that uh, three of these electric furnaces fit just like three of these regular furnaces do in this space. Go ahead and switch them on and you can see that they're starting to cook. Uh, this one, I'm going to go ahead and turn these guys off to show the automated igniter system that we've got set up for the uh, standard furnace as well. I'm going to go ahead and turn this switch on, that'll get power to the conveyors. Go ahead and get this one activated there and then flick the switch it hits that igniter that's sitting back there you can kind of see it behind the furnaces and it'll ignite these you can go ahead and turn that off no point in leaving it on these furnaces as you can see have wood coming in they've got sulfur coming in cooking and you'll notice that it starts to kind of uh build up and then disappear a little bit uh let me go ahead and show you what's going on here. So this conveyor is moving wood and sulfur ore into the furnaces. They're being split with a splitter and then distributed to each of the furnaces through the input at the top. And this conveyor back here, if I can get to it, it's kind of hard to reach, is taking the cooked charcoal and sulfur from the furnaces and combining it again and then shipping it out to a box right over here I'll show you so this box is connected to those furnaces and as you can see it's taken in that sulfur and that charcoal I've also got it set to take extra charcoal as it fills up and dump it underneath the mixing table uh, so you can use a little bit more efficient methods for making gunpowder that way uh, you could also have it wired into this auto crafter that you've got here attached to the tier 2 and make gunpowder that way. But what I've got going on here is a little bit different. So I've got this auto crafter set up to manufacture syringes using the blueprint there. It's got metal, cloth, 
and low grade fuel coming into the input. And those are coming in from the vending machine here. Now, if you look at the administration panel of the vending machine, you can see that I've got sell orders for low grade, frags, and cloth. As those come into the vending machine in exchange for these lovely rocks, they get pumped into this auto crafter through these conveyors. Those conveyors pump into the auto crafter, which then pumps into another conveyor here and turns those raw components into syringes, which are then moved from there into this box down here. I also have this box set up as a drop box for scrap and components, and it will automatically move scrap and components based on this filter into these boxes in the core. So this is just for comps and stuff that you might find while you're out farming. You just dump them in here and it'll automatically move those components from this box here. You'll watch they start to tick down a little bit. My recipient box might be a little bit. Oh, there you go. So they move out of there and they move back into this scrap box here. And you can see it's already quite full of stuff. As I move things out of it, it starts to fill up even more. So it's just showing that like this box is pretty active in terms of uh, input and output. Uh, we're going to go ahead and re-up on some of that sulfur here. I'll show you how that works. We go in to get some, get some wood, get some sulfur ore, maybe some of that, and some of that. Go ahead and just dump all this stuff in here. For me, the hover loot is H on my keyboard, so that's how I can move stuff like that without having to click it individually. Uh, I definitely didn't know about that for a long time, so I like to tell people that's how that works. Um, but you'll see like stuff starting to tick down as those furnaces are getting fed. You'll see uh, that they're gonna keep getting filled back up as they empty, and then as they cook, that stuff just disappears as well. Yeah, you see, so there's a little bit of cloth in there. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of these rocks out. They're gonna auto fill anyway from my rock storage box, which happens to be this one right here. You see, there's a good stack of rocks in there. Ooh, but you hear it's working now. So this thing is pumping those raw materials through these conveyors into this crafter, which is then crafting them into meds. You'll watch, one of them will pop up right here and then disappear almost immediately. Go ahead and put some of that extra stuff in there too. Boom, okay, there it is, and it's gone. So where did it go? Right here into this box, which is just for quick meds. When you respawn, uh, you just got killed, you need to run out and go and get somebody who just got you. You just pop this box open, take a med stick out, you know, do the thing, and then you're out and ready to go. It's that easy. Now, this design utilizes something that's pretty unusual in Rust, I would say, um, at least from my experience. Um, and that is these fully utilized honeycomb layers. Now, a lot of people think that it makes sense to just build honeycomb uh, and leave it empty because you know, why would you put anything in honeycomb? It's just there as like a raid buffer. But I would argue that as long as you set up your honeycomb correctly, such as by using windows and like hard side, like I do here, the honeycomb that is full is just as strong as honeycomb that's completely empty and you get to use it. So with this industrial update, it actually makes honeycomb stronger than ever because you can seal these off almost completely with like reinforced window bars and uh, with the embrasures. And they're just as hard to hammer through as a stone wall or, you know, in some cases, even a metal wall. And you can use all of that extra space, turning a two by one like this into an absolute machine for smelting, for storage, for any kind of thing that you're looking to save space on. One thing that not a lot of people know, and I still haven't uh, tested it with the electrical furnaces yet, is that it's only six of these small furnaces to produce the same amount of sulfur or metal as a large furnace. So with a floor plan like this, if you use all of these honeycombs, for furnaces, you have two large furnaces worth of production in one two by one base. That is pretty amazing if you ask me because you just could not get that same level of production 
out of a standard furnace base with the same footprint, and certainly not with the same threat of being raided. This is such a small base that most big groups would completely ignore it, especially if you're a solo and just have a key lock. People will see this base and think, oh, it's, you know, it's just a shop. There's nothing here that's worth my time. It might have a couple of boxes of prim kits in it, and that's about it. But I mean, as you can see, this base is a manufacturing monster, cranking out sulfur, charcoal, metal fragments, high quality metal and all you have to do is just dump stuff in this box you can see it's like taking stuff out as we talk and pumping it through these furnaces here you just you can't ask for a better way to spend your time in rust than to just walk into your base drop some wood and some metal fragments into a box and then leaving to go back out and keep playing the game and while you're gone your base gets automatic upkeep you get a box full of sulfur, and if you've set it up like I'm about to show you, a literal printer for syringes. Does it get much better than that? I, I don't think so. So like I said, the, the real tip of this video um, is not this floor plan, even though my personal opinion is that this is a gem of a base, especially for solos and duos. But the real tip, trick, and uh, little secret that I'm gonna give you here is how to make your own syringe printer. So I know that I went over the floor plan of this base and why I think it's a great design. And to me, you know, the video would be perfect just showcasing this super efficient, very tiny base um, that's outputting the same or potentially even more than a double large furnace base. Um, that alone is enough for me, but I can understand maybe you want a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I set up my syringe printer with the industrial update. So what you're gonna need for this uh, syringe printer, you're going to need a vending machine. You're going to need a tier two or tier three workbench, a box to receive the syringes when they're made, an auto crafter, at least a small battery, three of these industrial conveyors, and you're gonna need two of these box adapters. So these are the industrial like box adapters. They snap onto boxes. You can see them here and there. Um, it just allow you to move stuff into and out of the boxes. I'll show you exactly how this is gonna work. You may need some sort of power source. I have that kind of as an option because you can use uh, the generator and some low grade to um, just make power that way. I've got solar panels set up here that work just fine, or you can use windmill for something that's a little bit more reliable. But uh, that is basically all the components that you're gonna need. Um, to set it up, you're gonna put the vending machine down, you're gonna put the tier two down, and you're gonna put the box down. I've got a large box that's feeding the vending machine. That's optional. Um, the vending machine does have quite a lot of storage space, so you don't really need that as much. As you can see, I've got it set to just feed rocks uh, into there. Got these two conveyors set up. One of them conveys the rocks from that box into the vending machine. It goes through this pipe into there. Then you've got the vending machine itself. It's set up to purchase low grade metal fragments and cloth, and you can set that for sulfur or scrap or crude oil, diesel, anything that people want, uh, you can set up your vending machine to sell in exchange for these goods. Now, you're gonna want to take the output for the vending machine and run it into another conveyor here. You'll see from this conveyor that it is set up to receive low grade fuel, metal fragments, and cloth. And it's gonna take those out of the vending machine and leave everything else. Now it's gonna take those things and run them through this pipe, down across the floor, up the wall here through the window and into this auto crafter that is attached to the tier two workbench. If you look in here, you'll see that I put a blueprint for the syringe in the auto crafter, as well as materials that are being pumped from the vending machine into the input of the auto crafter uh, in order to make these syringes. Now those syringes are then pumped out of the auto crafter through this conveyor here, which is set up only to take the syringes out and moves them down here into this box where they're going to create so many beautiful meds that you can use to quickly regain your health and get back out into the adventure. Now, I'm gonna show you 
just quickly how this all works. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of low grade fuel, a little bit of metal fragments and a little bit of cloth. We're gonna go right on up here. Beautiful, we're gonna buy one of each just to get a little bit of the goods that we need stuffed into this vending machine. Beautiful, I love these rocks. Look at this beautiful rock. Yes, okay. As you can hear from inside, things are moving now. So the vending machine, it's got stuff in it, but all this stuff is ticking down because it's being pulled out of the vending machine and into the conveyors. So it's being ticked down, love it. It's going through this guy here into the auto crafter here where it boop, makes a little med stick. That med stick then disappears because it's going into this guy right here where it's being conveyed into this box. Watch, see? Nothing in that box except for these lovely comps here. And then med stick's about to appear. Just you wait, it's gonna happen. There it is. See, auto med stick printer. You can even seal it off and it's completely isolated. You've got just an absolutely incredible machine here working to keep you alive and well. I'm really hopeful down the line that we're going to be able to add these uh, really neat little adapters to the uh, mixing table. Not an option yet, but I think it might be somewhere down the line. If so, that's going to make, you know, making teas, gunpowder, and low-grade fuel that much more efficient because you can just like pop the adapter on and then just run all your raw materials into there. But with that being said, that pretty much sums up how this base design comes together and uses this industrial update to turn you into an absolute unit of production. It's not even that complicated. It does take a little bit of time to get used to the industrial stuff. I will admit it might look complicated, but uh, once you get some practice with it, it's actually not too tough. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just a fantastic little base design and uh, I hope that you find it helpful when you're getting your start on the next wipe. Um, it's a great starter base. It's tiny, it looks fantastic and it works like a charm. So if you have any questions about this design, if you have any comments, or if you wanna know anything about other things that I've shown uh, in this video, definitely don't hesitate to reach out. Like, leave a comment on the video, follow me on my socials, find a way to get in touch with me and I will gladly answer your questions because I find this update to be super inspiring. I'm really looking forward to getting to use all of these aspects in the full vanilla game. And uh, I know that a lot of people have had mixed feelings about it, but I'm super hopeful and really excited um, for everybody to get to try this stuff. So uh, with that said, and without further ado, thanks for coming and watching the video. Thanks for sticking around for the tips and tricks. If you did, um, there's gonna be more videos, including an expansion, at least one expansion of this base design to utilize a bunker and uh, possibly even some wide gap peak downs. That video is gonna be pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to that one as well. But uh, yeah, with that said, thanks for coming. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing. Uh, there's going to be more videos coming, I promise. And uh, I'm really looking forward to showing a little bit more of what Rust has to offer. Let them cook. Love it. All right. I would like to buy a rock, please. 